Hi everyone. Uh, so welcome to this supplementary video. Um, this supplementary video uh, will focus on uh, the topic of shear flows, uh, which we discussed in uh, lecture 17, that is the last lecture. Um, and the main uh, hope of this supplementary video is to kind of give you an example of an additional shear flow example problem where the system um, is not in Cartesian coordinates, but in cylindrical coordinates, okay? So remember in the homework problems that you're doing in homework seven and in your classroom, we did like uh, a, sh a shear flow where one plate was moving or two plates were moving, but here we'll not have a, a, a Cartesian geometry, um, but we'll have a cylindrical geometry. It'll still be planar flow, so it'll be still a longer plane, um, but uh, it will be um, sort of, um, uh, in, a, in cylindrical geometry, okay? So what is, the, what is the problem statement? So problem statement is what you see on your screen. Uh, so what is happening here essentially is uh, that we have a cylinder which is rotating. Um, so uh, this is a cylinder. By the way, this is a cylinder that looks like a circle, but remember this is, has a third dimension uh, in, in the plane, uh, in, in the plane, okay? Uh, and that sort of... Uh, the, the, the third dimension that you see and the, the goal of this um, uh, point is that if it's sort of rotating, uh, for this cylinder is rotating, what is the uh, velocity in the outward fluid, which is water, okay? So what happens in water? How can we determine the velocity profile in the water that it is going to disturb because of the movement of the cylinder? It's rotating with the speed of omega, rotational speed of omega, okay? Angular velocity omega. So clearly this is a cylindrical geometry. So it makes a lot of sense to do this uh, in, in a cylindrical system. Uh, what we will do is we'll ignore the velocity disturbance in the other direction. So in the, in the direction in, into the screen, okay? We'll not worry about that uh, coordinate system. So it's just a planar flow in a way. It's two dimensional in X and Y coordinate or R and theta coordinate. As you see in the top of your screen, the uh, top right R and theta coordinate system is also something you have seen. So we'll ignore the Z dependence, but we'll just focus on the R and theta dependence, okay? The usual, um, you know, um, assumption study, unidirectional, constant rho mu, and we can ignore gravity. These are all given to you. Um, know that it's just rotating, uh, the cylinder is rotating, you're not applying any pressure. So you can also assume that pressure is constant, much like what we did in the in the class, okay? So pressure is constant. I, so these are all the same assumptions that we also did in the uh, in the example problem in class, okay? So the first thing is we have to find which velocity direction is, is the non-zero one. And this is important. Um, and the what, what I want to really emphasize here is this is where your understanding of cylindrical coordinates comes in, okay? So remember was that ER and E theta, so E theta was tangential and E R was normal, right? So whenever uh, what whenever I am creating a flow which is because of rotational symmetry, I'm actually moving along a tangent. So we can say it because it is unidirectional, the only direction that should matter is the V theta, E theta hat. Okay, so this is the velocity that I want to find, V theta, E theta hat. And remember, what we're saying is there is no component in the ER direction and EZ was anyway ignored. So the ER does not have any component. This is why it's unidirectional. If I had an ER component as well, then you would have um, a two-dimensional two flow. And we had discussed an example while discussing a continuity equation, if you remember, we discussed this in, in one of the lectures where we had a VR component as well, but here we do not have it. It's just a V theta component, okay? So we start usually as usual by continuity equation and by the way, you don't have to remember these equations. You can always look them up in a table. Um, and uh, so we'll start with the continuity equation, which is one by R del by del R of R V R plus one by R del V theta by del theta plus del V Z by del Z is equal to zero. Uh, note that because V theta is the only component that is non-zero, it can be a function of R theta z and time it is not a function of z and time because it's two dimensional and steady so it can only be a function of r and theta okay so right now we have the argument that v theta is only a function of r and theta okay 
Okay, let's make it small v in case it's confusing. V theta is a function of r and theta. V sub of theta. Okay. All right. So uh, this is the continuity equation. Um, so Vr is zero, so this goes away. So and Vz is zero, this goes away. So we simply get del V theta by del theta is equal to zero because R cannot be zero. And I should note one thing here: uh, the fluid domain um, basically is greater than R, uh, greater than capital R, right? It, the fluid domain, the the region of of uh, you know our calculation is greater than or equal to R, and basically R or you can write it like between infinity and capital R. Maybe this is a better way to write. That it can be equal to R or greater than R, but it goes towards infinity. Okay, So that's essentially the domain that we want to solve in. So del V theta by del theta is zero, which in this implies basically V theta, v theta is only a function of R. Okay, So what's saying is that the flow, flow is happening tangentially but the disturbance only changes with the, the direct distance away from the center. So V theta is only a function of R. This is very similar as you recall from what it did in the class for a planar flow and shear flow, but now this is in the cylindrical coordinates. V theta is a function of R. So Navier-Stokes equation now. So Navier-Stokes equation. Okay. So Navier-Stokes equation. Um, and so I will also look it up. What is the Navier-Stokes equation in cylindrical coordinates in the theta direction? So remember, it's logically we can also do r direction, but you will get zero equal to zero. So I'm not doing that. I'm just focusing on the theta direction. You can show that the r direction gives zero equal to zero. Now we will do the theta direction. Um, and and don't worry about r direction. I would just say ignore r. There is a small subtlety in the r direction uh, which we'll not discuss in this course, but I am happy to chat about if you, one of you tries the R direction, I can tell you what the what the subtlety is, but for practical purposes, you can just forget about it, okay? So now let's focus on the theta direction. So the theta direction essentially is rho del V theta by del T um, plus V R del V theta by del R plus V theta by R del v theta by del theta uh, v, r, v theta by del v theta by del theta v r v theta by r plus v z del v theta by del v z del v theta by del z okay so that is that and then I have one minus p one minus r del p by del theta plus rho g, th g theta plus mu into 1 by r del by del r of r del v theta by del r minus v theta by r square plus 1 by r square del square v theta by del r square Sorry, uh, del square one by r square del square v theta by del theta square del theta square plus two by r square del v r by del theta del square v theta by del z square. Okay. So this is a full equation in the theta direction. It is much longer than the usual Cartesian coordinates, but um, I just wanted to show this to you fully so steady system so this goes to zero steady this is zero because vr is equal to zero then we have v theta by r del v theta by del theta but del v theta by del theta is zero because of the um because of the um you know continuity equation so continuity and vr is equal to zero and vz is equal to zero so this all cancels out. P is constant, so this goes to zero. G is, gravity is zero, so this because we're ignoring gravity, so this goes to zero. Now v theta is a function of r, so this stays. V theta is a function of r, so this stays. Um, then I don't have one by r square del square v theta by del theta, theta square because again del v theta by del theta is zero. So this goes away. Um, 
is it um, L V R by del theta? Yes, it is L V R by del theta. Here in this continuity equation, so this goes away because V R is equal to zero, and del square V theta by del square is equal to this is also equal to zero. I was just surprised to see a V R in this equation, but in cylindrical coordinates, it becomes more complicated. So it is there, but it is zero. Okay. So we have two terms now. What we really get is one by R mu is outside one by R del by del r of r del v theta by del r minus v theta by r square is equal to zero um this goes away um and what you really get out is um del by del r r del v theta by del r is equal to zero which implies that del by del r of I have just taken the uh, um, one by r here and cancelled with the r square so this is my um, uh, differential equation that I get um, from my um, from the um, from my governing equations okay or the Navier-Stokes equation okay so let's recap the cylinder was moving and rotating um, then I use the unidirectional, so it's only the V theta, E theta. Then we said a continuity equation, V theta is only a function of R. Then we simplify the Navier-Stokes equation and got two terms, del by del R of R del V theta by del R minus V theta by R uh, is equal to zero. And um, finally, we also need the boundary conditions, right? Boundary conditions. So we have two boundaries. Remember, R is between capital R and infinity. So one will be R is equal to capital R. The velocity of the solid and the fluid should be the same because you know they're in contact. So V theta is equal to omega R, right? Because it's spinning with omega, so omega R. And then when R goes to infinity, um, what should we expect is that the disturbance because of the cylinder should die out because we shouldn't expect it to really be, you know, um, to be able to do that. So this is what we get as our V theta boundary condition. Okay, so this is no slip. No slip. Uh, here, the disturbance vanishes far away. Okay. Now, finally, I have to essentially solve this equation uh, del by del R of R del V theta by del R minus V theta by R is equal to zero. Uh, so this particular solution um, is uh, something that you may be aware of or may not be aware of, um, but it is a, a sort of a known solution to this problem uh, of differential equations. If you're not aware of it, don't worry. We are not expected to know these kinds of differential equations for the purpose of this class. However, I will show you, I'll give you the solution and then we can verify whether that works or not. Similarly, in your homework problems or exams, uh, whenever we give you such a problem that it's not may not have a solution that you have seen before, we'll give you the solution and you have to show us whether it works or not, okay? So the solution that basically we get out for this is omega r square by small r, okay? So we this is the, this is the solution that you get out, okay? By solving this equation here, okay, solution. So now let's verify. Okay, so let's verify this equation uh, solution. First, let's verify the boundary condition. So V theta at capital R is equal to omega R square by R. So this becomes omega R. So this checks out. So this boundary condition is satisfied. When V theta R goes to infinity, it becomes omega R square by infinity. So this approach is zero. So this also boundary conditions are clearly satisfied, um, but we also have to satisfy the governing equation. So now let's take del V theta by del R. So del V theta by del R, del V theta by del R is equal to minus omega R square by R square. Okay. Then I have R del V theta by del R then becomes minus omega R square minus omega r square by r okay and del by del r of r del v theta by del r and becomes omega r square by r square okay so this is the this is the term i 
what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to calculate this term based on my solution. So I get, so del by del R of R, del V theta by del R minus V theta by R is equal to, so this term is omega R square by R square and minus V theta, which is omega R square by R by R. So this essentially cancels out. So we get equal to zero. Which means that the boundary condition, the, the governing solution actually does satisfy the, the answer. Okay. So essentially what I've shown you here is that we have a solution for V theta. Okay. So we have a solution for V theta, which is a disturbance around a cylinder because of the rotation of this, you know, rotation of this um, cylinder. Uh, and you can, uh, and don't worry about the final differential equation solution. You should be able to set the problem up and have boundary conditions, but the solution is not that important, okay? But, uh, that is for this problem because it was a more complex sort of formulation uh, to get the answer. If you're aware, great, not, don't don't worry about it, okay? But you should be able to verify it. So let's recap again, unidirectional flow, we said we showed V theta is a function of R and theta, then continuity equation made it, made it, made it clear that V theta is only a function of R. Then we did the Navier-Stokes equation in the theta direction, we solved it and got a differential equation. We had two boundary conditions, no slip and disturbance far away vanishes. And when we solved it, we got the solution as omega, omega r squared by small r. So now my v vector essentially becomes omega r squared by r e theta hat. Okay, this is my solution. Now, um, this is part one of the supplementary video. And the second video, as per the semester feedback, mid semester feedback, what I will do is I will do a coding exercise to visualize this flow and plot it in MATLAB. And then we will share that um, with you as well. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And then I'll see you in the next supplementary video.